right, so section um, 7.3, we're going to look at a couple different patterns with logs. This is one of them. Okay, so this is an expression that looks kind of complicated, but the answer actually is very simple. If you have an expression where the base on an exponential and the base on the log match, you have the same thing. What happens is they cancel out. Okay. And all that you're left with is m. And that's the answer to the whole <coughs> problem when you simplify it. So is the end there to begin with? Yep. So if you had something like 5 raised to the log base 5 of 12. The answer would just be 12. Oh. Basically, this part cancels out because that number and that number match. So the log cancels out Yep. Yeah, the whole thing. Okay, that only works if they match. Okay, if they don't match, well, then you need a calculator to do it out. So it's like all of the same, like, the same. Uh, you just say the base on the exponential is the same as the base on the log. There's no, they just so match. The same base. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and here's one that you saw in your homework. Okay, and I said I'm not going to explain yet why it cancels out, but this one is where you have a base on a log that matches the base on the argument. And what happens here? Yeah. They again, it's they cancel out, and the answer is whatever that exponent would be. So pretend you had like log base 7 of 7 cubed. Well, the answer would just be 3, whatever, whatever the exponent was. And this is the reason why, do I still have your the homework one? Let's see if I can find it. It was the homework problem that somebody asked me about with the, with the E's. Yeah, this one. Okay, and I said if you take the ln of each side, it cancels the E's out, and I said I'm not going to show you why right now. But if you look, look at this, we write ln the, the long way, log base E, and now write the rest of it, E to the eighth. What do you notice about the base on the argument and the base on the log? Mm -hmm. They match. When they match, it cancels out. And that's why all you're left with is 8. Same thing on the other side. If you took the ln, you'd have something like this. Log base e of e to the negative 2x. Well, the e's match. So that cancels out, that cancels out. And you end up with 8 equals negative 2x. So it gives you a little bit of a shortcut from the homework problem. You don't need to know that shortcut to do the problem, because we didn't know this yesterday, um, but now you do. Okay, it's a special case when they match up. What kind of equation is that? Is that a uh, logarithmic equation or exponential? That's log. Okay, you have a log, you've got a base, you have an argument, and something by itself. It, what I'm going to do is change it to exponential. Okay, the reason I'm going to change it to exponential is it's, when I do that, it's going to show you why this formula works. And you already know why this works. You might not recognize it by looking at it written this way, but I guarantee you when you rewrite it as an exponential, you'll recognize something you already know. Yeah. Do the r's cancel out too? No, just, just the log base a and a. The r is the only thing that's left. OK, what's, um, what's my base in problem two? What is it? Yeah, I've got, let me get rid of these circles so I don't confuse you. OK, so that's my base, what I just circled, a. What's my exponent? Um. R. The exponent is what's by itself on the other side. And now what haven't I used? A to the R. This whole thing, that's your argument. Look what happened. Is that true? A to the R equals A to the R? Yeah. Yeah, it just says something equals itself. In geometry, you call that the reflexive property. Something equals itself. So that's why that formula is true. Probably didn't recognize it as kind of a reflexive property, but that's all that it really is. Written as a log. Look at rule three. Rule three says if you take uh, log base a of one, you get zero. 
So in other words, the logarithm of 1, any base, always is 0. Okay. Let's see why that's true. And again, this is going to be a, a reason you already know. Okay, once we rewrite it, guarantee you'll recognize this rule. Okay, what's my base? A. Okay, that's my base. What's my exponent? Zero. And what's the only thing I haven't used? One. Okay, what this rule says, if you rewrite it as an exponential, if you take anything and raise it to the zero power, you get one. Okay. How many people already recognize that? They knew that. Anything to the zero power gives you one. Yeah. It's just you didn't recognize it as a log, but that's all that the rule is. Okay. So the right-hand side is just the reason why the rule works. I'm trying to make it make sense using stuff you already know. Okay. We'll do the same thing with rule four. Rule 4 says that if you take log base A of A, the answer always comes out to 1. So an example would be like uh, log base 3 of 3. The answer is 1. Log base 7 of 7. The answer is 1. Okay, let's see why, why it comes out to 1. Okay, what is my base here? A, which one? The higher A or the lower A? Yeah, this is your base. Okay, A. Okay, somebody else tell me, what's my exponent? One. So it's by itself. And what's the only thing I haven't used? A. Yeah, the other A that was my argument. All that rule four says is if you take anything and raise it to the first power, you get the same thing back. Anything to the first power stays the same. Okay, another rule you probably already knew from base basic arithmetic. Maybe you didn't recognize it though as a log rule. Okay, any questions on those four basic patterns? Okay, so now we'll try, uh, try a couple examples. Okay, I'll give you one, see if you can figure out which rule that it matches up with, and then simplify it and, and give me the answer. Anyone uh, think they can tell which rule is that? Yeah, that's the first rule. You have a logarithm up in the exponent, the base on the logarithm, and the base on the exponential. They match. So if you simplify that whole thing, what's the answer going to be? Pi. Pi, yeah. Just pi. Any question on that? So there's, no, uh, there's no work to really do. It's just recognizing the pattern I showed you. How about uh, B? Log base 0.2 of 0.2 to the negative fourth power. Yeah, that's rule two. This time the log isn't in the exponent. It's just a, a log, and the base and the argument match. Okay. So what, what do you end up with for an answer? Negative four. And that's it. This one in a second, you'll see it's actually very similar to the one you did in the homework. You'll see the connection as soon as we do something. Yeah, how can I rewrite this? That ln is hiding something, and I don't, I don't want to hide anything. Yeah. Remember, ln means log base e. So I just rewrote that part that I circled. Now write down the rest of it, e to the kt. This is like the one in the homework where you have the two e's. Now we can see that it's similar to one of our rules. That's uh, rule two. Then. That's rule two. You might have not recognized it right away because the ln hides that, that second e. But there really are two, and they, can, they cancel out. So what do you get? Yeah, k times t, whatever, whatever k times t is. 
Okay, and let's do one more. Log base 15 of 15. Be the answer to that. What is it? One. Yeah. Which rule is that? That's yeah, the fourth rule. With the base and the argument match, you get one. Okay, I didn't do an example of rule three, but any, any question on that one? You just see a one is the argument. The base could be anything. Okay, remember, our bases and arguments will always be positive. You'll never, you'll never have a negative in our, in our <coughs> problems. Questions? It's kind of the first first part of what we're going to do. All right. So the second part has to do with taking logarithms and either splitting them apart or combining them together. So it's kind of like uh, combining like terms. Right? Like if I had three x plus two x and I write five x, well, I can combine them because they're they're both x's. If I had 2x plus 2y, well, I, I can't. Right, so we're going to learn when we can and when we can't combine uh, logarithms. Okay, so here's our first rule. And you can either take this rule to take something that's already combined and split it apart into two, or you can take something that's split apart into two and combine it into one. So this rule says that if you have a product, Okay, that's what that is, m times n. And you want to split it apart into two separate logs. You can do that as long as you add them together. So a product splits into two logs as addition. Product splits as addition. Okay, notice the base to start out with on the log was a. When we split it apart, it stays a. So the base stays the same through the whole problem. Here's an example with numbers. If you had log base A of 4 times 5, you could write it as log base A of 4 plus log base A of 5. Okay, I won't do this for all of them, but let me type that in. Okay, and I'll show you uh, it does come out the same. Okay, I'm going to type all that in as one thing. What's 4 times 5? 20. So I'm going to type in log of 20. And remember, I can use any base I want. Okay. If I type it in by pressing the log button, what base did I just decide to use? 10. 10. Okay, I'm deciding to use 10. I could do E if I wanted. Base E, that would work fine. Use any base you want. It's just easy for me to type in 10. So there's the log of 20 with base 10. Now let me type in log 4 plus log 5. There's log 4 plus log 5. Same thing. Uh, what's a different way that I could break up 20 instead of uh, 4 times 5? Yeah, I could break it up into 2 times 10. Um, and that would also work. It would be equivalent to everything we just typed in. Okay, log 2 plus log 10, get the same answer. So any way that you could factor the number 20, 40 and a half, that would also work. Okay. The point is a product splits as a sum. Okay, rule 2. Instead of a product, now I have a fraction. Any guess how a fraction is going to split. It's not, it's not going to be a sum. Subtract, yeah, it's going to be a difference. So if you have a fraction and you want to split it apart, you can split it into two logs, keep the base the same as the original, except use a subtraction sign. Your first argument is the log of the numerator. I'm sorry, yeah, your first argument is your numerator of the fraction. Your second argument is what was in the denominator. 
Okay, and another another example with with numbers. Okay, I'm not going to type that one in, but you could you could look at that yourself. So there, there might be a reason why we would take something that's together and split it apart. Maybe we could recombine it with something else and cancel something. But in general, we're going to spend a lot of time going the other way. We'll, we'll practice both. But I think it's, it's handy to be able to take things that are separate and combine them together because that makes it simpler. Taking things that are together and splitting it apart can make it more complex. But there might be a reason why you'd want to do that. Okay, and our third rule. Okay, the third rule says that if you have an exponent on an argument to a log function, you're allowed to take that exponent and put it in front. Okay, you're allowed to take the exponent and put it down in front. What that's called is it's taking something that was a power and now it's a factor. Instead of m being raised to the power of r, now r is being multiplied by that log. That's called a factor when you multiply two things together. And there's a, an example with numbers. Okay, rule three is really very similar to rule one. Okay, let me show you a, an example with numbers. Let's look at the uh, log of two times two times two. Okay, or, you know what? Let me start out by writing it this way. Two cubed. Okay, according to the third rule, what am I allowed to do with that three? Move it to the front. So somehow it comes out to this. Three times log of two. You can put that three in the front. Let me, uh, let me show you why. How do you write two cubed the long way? For somebody that doesn't understand an exponent. Yeah. Two times two times two. Now this is really the first rule. I only did it for two, two things, but you could have m times n times x times y. You could have as many as you want. How does multiplication split apart? Does it split as a sum or a difference? It's a sum. How many, well, when I split this apart, m times n split into two parts. How many parts is this going to split into? 2 times 2 times 2. Three parts. Each one of them is going to be log plus another log plus another log. What's going to be the argument to my first log? Josh? Two. two? How about the argument to my second log? Two. And to my third log? Two. two. So when I split it apart, it splits into three things that are the same. Log of two, plus log of two, plus log of two. How many log of twos do I have there? Well, how many are there? Three. I have three of the log twos. That's the reason why you can take the three and put it in front, right? Without going through all that work every time. So now just remember, when you see an exponent, Put it in front. That's kind of an example why. All right, and the last thing, uh, your book doesn't specifically mention this. They assume you already know it, but from algebra, if you take the square root of something or you raise it to the one-half power, that's the same thing. Okay, let's take... Um, 9. Okay, take the square root of 9. You get 3. Take 9 raised to the 1 half power. 
you get three. It's the same thing. The reason why this is going to come in handy, why would we bother doing it if it's the same thing? Well, if you write a square root with an exponent, look what happens. Now you have an exponent. From rule three, we can do something with exponents. Right? That's where this is going to come in handy. Now you're allowed to take exponents and move them somewhere, specifically in front. Okay? How many people already knew that? If you take the square root of something and raise it to the one-half power, same thing. Okay. All right, so let's try uh, some examples taking logs and we'll either combine them or we'll, we'll split them. In this case, let's split them apart. So we're going to write everything as a sum or difference. And they tell us not to leave anything as an exponent. If there's an exponent, they want it written as a factor. That's what rule three does for us. Okay, first thing I need to decide is if this is going to split as a sum or difference. Okay, uh, how about Aaron? Is this going to be a, a sum or difference? Sum. Sum, yeah, and how do you know? Right, that's not a fraction, that's 3 times x. Multiplication splits as a sum. So you're going to have two logs. Uh, Justin, what's going to be the base on each one of them? Four. Four. The base when you split it doesn't change. Keep it exactly the same as what it was. Now I need my argument to my first log. Um, Evan, what's my first argument? Three. Second argument? X. X. And that's it. You're done. Yeah, they, they get a little bit harder, but that's, that's the basic idea. Any question on that? All right. Let's try this one. Okay, again, first thing I want to do is look at it and decide, is this going to split as a sum? So is there a product involved? Or is this going to be a difference? Do I have a fraction? Okay, Olivia, uh, what do I have this time? Is it going to split as a sum or a difference? A That's a sum again. Because it's something times something. Five times r cubed. So two logs. Okay, Monique, what's going to be the base on each log? Um, four. Oh, two. Two. I'm going to keep it exactly the same as what we started with. Okay, Rachel, my first argument? Five. Five? And my second argument? Go ahead, Rachel. R cubed. R cubed. Now, we would be done except in the directions they said don't leave powers. They said write powers as factors. So who can tell me, what do I do with that 3? Yeah. You put the 3 in front of the, the second one. Yeah. You just put it right in front of the one that it's, it belongs to. Okay. And then that's your final answer. So log base 2 of 5, that stays the same, plus 3, log base 2 of So it's a little bit harder. It had a couple, couple rules in it, but not, not too bad. Okay, let's try one with a fraction. Um, so, darling, looking at that, when we split it, should we split it into a sum or difference? Difference. Yeah. How do you know? It's a fraction. Fraction always splits as a difference. Okay, Josh, my base on each log? Nine. Nine, stays the same. Okay, Jacob, what's, what's the argument to my um, first log? X. X, good. My second log? Two. Two. And that's it. So log base nine of X minus log base nine of two. 
Hey, any question on that one? I'll try one more that's still pretty easy. This time I decided to do log base e. Okay, I told you these formulas work with any base you want. So instead of writing it as log base e, they use the abbreviation, LM. All right, so Jamie, when we split it apart, we've got two LNs. Is it going to be a sum or a difference? A difference. Yep. And a difference. And now I've got to decide um, what my first argument is going to be. So as you look at it, you might say, well, there's a couple things you need to do. If you want to do more than one thing in this step, you can. Or if you want to do it in two steps, we can do that. Um, so Michaela, what, what would you do next? Yeah, you can put y, you want to put y cubed right here? Yeah, that's fine. So you can start by doing that. Uh, and then my second argument would be what? Well, the eight. And then have Right. Now the three has to go in front of the Right, in front. So if you wanted to do that, that's what you could have done uh, all in one step. Okay, but if not, just make sure you do it in two steps. So it's three L N Y minus L N E. Any question on that one? Yeah. Is it okay if we put log B like base E? Um you, well on the test I won't I won't write it that way. So you just have to know that that means L N. Yeah. And you won't see that in the <coughs> in the book. Okay. Um, it's not wrong though. Yeah. Okay, any other questions on that? Let's try one that's a little bit more of a medium one, then we'll do one, one more, and then we'll, we'll try the reverse of this. We'll take putting it back together. Okay, so Emma, um, sum or difference when we split this one? Difference, right. Overall, you've got a fraction. Something in the top, something in the bottom. Okay, now my first... Argument, uh, Katie? Okay, so she did both things at once, and that's fine. So normally your first argument would have been ln x squared, but then she has to take the two and put it in front. Okay, so she did it all in one step. It's perfect. Okay, and Tamara, what about my second argument? Yep, where's the three going to go? In front of ln. Yep, three in front of ln. And what's going to come after the ln? X squared. Uh, nope, we're the x squared. That was the numerator, so we already did that. Oh, x minus one. X minus one. Make sure you keep that in parentheses. You cannot get rid of the parentheses. Any question on that one? Is everyone okay doing it all in one step? It's the first time we did it that way. Okay. Right, so let's go to uh, the last one for this type. Okay, so it looks looks like it's complicated, but really if you do it one step at a time, it's it's no harder than any of the others. It's the same three rules you use every time. It never gets any harder than those three rules. Okay, so when I split this, what do you think? Am I going to start out by splitting it as a sum or a difference? Yeah, it's a difference. Overall here, there's a fraction. Okay, so you always start by splitting the fraction first. Log base A, uh, square root, x squared plus 1, minus. And I'm going to use a bracket because I need to subtract... Well, we'll see why in the next step. Also, once I use parentheses in one spot, I try not to use parentheses again because it could look confusing. So you're going to subtract for this whole thing. Okay, what can I do with that first part? Something we talked about 
today, but we haven't done it yet. This is the first time it's going to come up. Um, close, not, not multiply. Well, yeah, can you go ahead and explain? Yeah, OK, so you did everything all together. So really, you're going to multiply by 1 half because you can change this to an exponent of 1 half. Right? So first, I'll start by going like this, but then I'm going to erase it. If you're going to take a square root, it's the same as raising it to the 1 half power. But then she said you can multiply by 1 half. Put that in front. Okay, so we just did two things in one step. This first part of the problem is done. Nothing else you can do with it. Let's look at the second part. Now the second part can be split. How do you think this second log is going to split as a sum or a difference? Yeah, it's a sum. Okay, what you have, if you want to think of it like that, it's the log of something times something else. And multiply two things together. Okay, so let's split that. Okay, I forgot my base on that one, but it's it's gonna stay the same through the whole problem. It's always A. Aaron, uh, what's going to be my first first argument? X cubed. Yep, x cubed. Can you think of anything you could do with that? Put the, three in front of the, put the yeah. So you can write it as x cubed, but then you're going to have to take the three and put it in front. So why don't we just do it all in one step? And Justin, how about my second argument? Put the four in front of the log and then yep. x plus one. And then x plus one. And that's it. That's the whole problem. We did the whole thing in two steps by combining a few steps into one. So you do need that minus sign there. Because remember, when you have minus in front of a grouping symbol, it really means that minus is distributed to each part. So that minus gets distributed. So you've got to leave, leave the brackets in there. Okay, any question on that one? So it looked more complicated, but really it wasn't, um, it wasn't really that much harder than any of the other ones. Just one, one step at a time. Okay, so everybody feels comfortable with taking logs and splitting them apart. Okay, that's, that's probably the harder. The harder way. Combining them together is easier because at each step it gets simpler and simpler rather than more and more complicated. Okay, and the way you recombine them, you use the same three rules you just did. Just think about doing it in reverse now, going back up to what you started with. Okay, so this one is uh, log base A7 plus 4 log base A3. Anybody think they know what the first step would be? Remember, think about doing this in reverse. Right, what? The base? I'm not sure what you mean. You can explain it if you want. I'm, I'm just not, I'm not sure. Yeah. Right, move the 4 back as an exponent. Okay, that's the first thing I would, I would do. Is that what you meant, move the 4 as an exponent? No. Okay, well, that's, that's what you want to do. Put the 4 back, back up. Now, instead of just writing 3 to the 4th, I would, I would do that out. Does anybody know what 3 to the 4th power is? 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, so it's 27 times 3. Yeah. Might as well write it that way. 
And now our last step. Let me move this up a little bit. Okay, our last step is to look at the addition and think how would addition recombine? What must it have been? Multiplication. Multiplication. Yeah. And what are the two things that are multiplied? Seven and eighty-one. And when you have something like that, um, you can do it out. Seven times eight, that gives me 56. Seven times one is seven. So it's 567. Just did a little arithmetic trick in my head. Okay, any question on that? And that's it. Once you recombine a log, there's really no way to split it again. All right? It's like if I gave you the number 100, you wouldn't know how to split it. It could be 25 times 4. It could be 10 times 10. You, you can't go backwards once it's recombined. All right, try that one on your own. See if you can recombine that into a single log. Okay, so first thing, I'm going to take that 2 and put it back up as an exponent. And then inside the parentheses, are we going to have multiplication or division? Division. So I think we can really do this all in one step. What's going to be in the top? U squared. Okay, yeah, so U squared. What's in the bottom? V. That's it. That's the whole thing. So if you want to do it all in one step, Put the 2 up and write it as a fraction. We can do it all together. Any question on that one? All right, so we got 2 left. Um, yeah, let's, let's try both of them. Let's try, let's try this one first. OK, so first thing I want to do is put the exponent, put the 2 thirds back as an exponent. I'm going to assume everybody already knew that. But I want to show you how you raise a number to a fraction, okay, if you don't remember. We just did 3 to the 4th a minute ago. What's 3 to the 4th? 81, and then minus 8. 81 minus 8 is 70, 73. Anyone remember how you, how you do this part? I think that's just going to be the hardest thing here. The log stuff is easy. But raise a number to a fraction. Okay, well, you can type it in, or you do it like this. Do that part first, 8 squared. How much is 8 squared? 64. And then you have a 3 in the bottom of a fraction. That means cube root. Just like a 2 in the bottom means square root. So 8 squared is 64. What's the cube root of 64? 4. Comes out nice. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. Okay. What's that? Cube root because there's a 3 in the bottom. Just like when you raise something to the 1 half power, there's a 2 in the bottom. That means square root. If you had a 5 in the bottom, it would mean fifth root. We're probably never going to see anything more than a 3 in the bottom, though. Not a 5. Okay. If you're not sure, you can always type it in on your calculator. This is just one I can do faster in my head than even typing it in on a calculator. Because it comes out nice. Most times, if you just pick a number, like 9 to the 2 thirds, it's not going to come out nice. Most of the time. Okay. And how does that recombine? Division or addition? Or, sorry, Div yeah. division or multiplication? Yeah, division. So it's ln of 473. Okay, so this one, again, looks kind of complicated, but I bet we can do the whole thing in one step. When I recombine it, What's going to be the base on my log? A. OK, 
Okay, now look at the first three parts. Log base A of X plus log base A of 9 plus log base A of X squared plus 1. How do you recombine things that were added? You multiply them. So you have an X times a 9 times an X squared plus 1. So we normally write it like this. That's X times 9 times X squared plus 1. Now what about this minus log 5? That's division. And the 5, that's minus. So that goes in the bottom. And that's it. It's all recombined. Now if they really wanted us to simplify, you could distribute this out if they wanted that. 9x times x squared is 9x cubed. 9x times 1 is 9x. They didn't ask us to distribute it, but... That's an exponent, right? They could. The 2? Yeah. This whole thing? No, that's an argument. Yep. And the exponent there is, is a 2. Any question on that one? Okay, so the last part, if you have your um, calculator, this is how to, how to type some of this in on a calculator. Okay, so on, on a calculator like this, there's only two bases for logs that I can type in. Does anybody remember what's one of the two bases you can do? Base 10, yep, if you press your log button. You can do base 10. And there's one other one you can do. The LN, which is base E. Base 10 and base E. Those are the only ones you can type in with a button. Okay, what this formula is going to allow us to do is type something in that's not base 10 or base E. And that's it. That's the formula. So the formula says if you want to type in log base A of M, remember A and M can be anything you want as long as they're greater than zero. And in the homework, they might write down some things like that. So don't get confused by them writing A is greater than zero, M is greater than zero. It's just you can't do it if it's not because we're not doing complex numbers. Not with this. Okay, so A and M have to be positive. Right, so let's, um, let's try something like log base 2 of 7. Okay, let me show you how you would type that in. You type log 7 divided by log 2. In the formula, what base am I using? It's, it's not written. I'm using base 10. Base 10 is perfect. I have a button for that on the calculator. Okay, so let me show you. I'll show you three ways you can type in log base 2 of 7. Okay, first way. If you have a, a graphing calculator, you can press, let me get out of this, alpha. Press F2, and then there's something that says log base. Well, if you press that, it allows you to type in whatever you want. Two, seven. Okay, but let's say you don't have that. If all you got is like a scientific one, then you're going to have to type it in using this formula, which probably takes about the same amount of time. So log of seven. Oops. Log of seven. Make sure you close the parenthesis. Divided by log of 2. That's it. And when I hit enter, I should get the same thing. Okay, so typing in as a fraction gives you a way to do a different base if you don't have a calculator like this. Okay, and I said I'd show you a third way. Well, the third way is instead of using the log button, you use the ln button. Um, I wouldn't try doing it both ways. I would pick one way and just remember it that way. It is exactly the same thing. 
if I did ln7 divided by ln2. It's no difference. I, I generally do it that way. Okay, let's try, um, try one on your own. Try typing in log base 5 of 12. First thing, can somebody tell me, as you're thinking about what, what to press, how am I going to rewrite this so that I can type it into the calculator? Because there's no button on your calculator for base 5. Yeah. Log of 12 over log 5. What base did you decide to use? Yeah, he's using base 10. You could do base 10 or base E. You've got buttons for both in your calculator. Type it in. Make sure you try it so you get the same thing. Log of 12. You think it matters if I close that parenthesis? Yes. Yeah, if you don't, uh, it's going to mess up. You'll get an answer, but it's uh, not the right one. Okay, so log 12 divided by log 5. Uh, what do we get when you type that in? What is it? 1.5. 1. 1. Let's go to two decimals. So yeah, 1.54. Everybody get that? Good. Okay, and again, that's not an exact, that's uh, approximate. That's just another example. Okay. We, don't, we don't have to do the second one. But that's probably the easiest thing we'll do with logs. I'll change the base one. Okay. Any, any question on the change of base one? Okay, so now you know how to take logarithms, recognize those special patterns we talked about, okay. combine logarithms together, or split them apart. Okay, and you've got a formula from yesterday to change to exponential form and change back to log form. So tomorrow we'll look at uh, using all of that to kind of solve equations with logs. Okay. So for tomorrow, some things that you want to make sure you know if you're a little rusty on, factoring. Okay, we are like Algebra 1 kind of factoring, very basic, but you do need to know it. Um, quadratic formula from Algebra 1, that might come up. Um, if you don't remember it, I'll, I'll briefly refresh it, but that's something that could come up too, factoring quadratic formula. Other than that, just basic Algebra 1 skills. All right, so the homework, uh, it's on 485, 7 to 15 odd. 31 to 33, all. And 39, 40, 51, and 52. And 65 to 69, odd.